Welcome back to the Leader Mentality Show. We are at CCMF in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. It is Friday the 9th and we are live on scene. We're just rip, wrapping up with the Greg Parish Band and you can hear them in the background still so you know this is authentic. And I'm here with a guy that is legendary in the music circles. And he's super humble so he's not going to admit it. But this is DJ Dank Williams. How you doing brother? I'm doing lovely now. I see you're smiling. I admit. So what's I, going on today? Hey, doing well, doing well. You know, and, and I appreciate you coming back on the show with us for round two. Uh, always a pleasure with you, Rob. Yeah, man. Well, it's, it, you know, one thing I, I found out about you that I didn't know is last year after we interviewed, you were the most authentic, like, down-to-earth guy. Stop. Hey, man, Stop. you know, look, so you see this guy out on the stage, and he's out there dancing and getting people going, but then when you meet him behind the scenes, just authentic, man. I appreciate that. That comes out. Thank you, brother. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Well, so let's start back, Dink. You know, you've had a huge career. When did you get started doing DJ work? I got started doing DJ work when I was about 15 years old. A buddy of mine had some turntables out in his little outbuilding. And uh, I went over there to see him one day, and I just fell in love with the creativity and the art that he was doing. Because I'm a music lover anyway. Mm -hmm. I was raised on a horse ranch in Randleman, North Carolina. And, uh, man, I fell in love with it. Mowed a couple of yards. Got, got me some turntables and started throwing parties in a pasture beside my mama's house. And uh, we, would cook a, we would cook a pig and call all the girls and call all the guys <laughs> and tell them to come on over. And uh, it just started like that, man. And then uh, people would say, hey, man, I'll give you 50 bucks. Come on over. And it started just like that. Are you it's, serious? Yeah, it's, just been, it's just been rolling like that. And I've been trying to get better a little bit every time because I don't want to crap nobody out of their money. <laughs> <laughs> you, know what I mean? you know what? I appreciate that. I think some of the best people that are in leadership positions or, or, or successful positions think like that. You're, you're not like, how many people can I make money from? Mm -hmm. You're like, how can I give good value for what I'm doing? Yes. So I appreciate yes. that, man. Well, going back to, so you're mowing yards to raise enough money to get your first turn. Yeah, go to the pawn shop and get me one. <laughs> <laughs> and I got me one. And you got it. Do you still have that one? Is it sitting I in the basement? I do still have that one. I man. got it in in the display case all right. okay, yeah, all in right. the man cave sure do well man if you could go back in time to a 15 year old you what would you tell yourself I mean is there is there any advice you would say that, that would have driven you yeah, uh, definitely wouldn't be chasing wild women like I am <laughs> <laughs> I just dig it I just dig yeah. uh, I would tell myself to uh, to work harder mm -hmm. and, and, and be more stronger in my work ethic the way I am now if I was working the way I am now when I was 15, I'd probably be up in the White House by now. <laughs> President <laughs> Dink Williams, I really love that. Vote for me, baby. Vote for Dink 2024 or whatever. <laughs> well, you know, look, I mean, that's a, a great thing, and I appreciate you saying that because I feel like there's young people who watch the show sometimes, and they don't realize if you just started working a little bit earlier, even if it's one year earlier, how much further you'd be. And it doesn't mean you can't still be a huge success if you do get a late start. Yes, sir. But the earlier you get going, the better, for sure. I strongly believe in trying to be a better person every day in any kind of aspect that you're lacking on. Man. You know, and I just, that's what I just try. And you was talking about value earlier, Rob. And through this music, my, I've learned that my value is all glory to God to put me in this position mm -hmm. where I am right now, to shine his light through me, to heal people through music. Wow. Man, that is so cool, man. <laughs> well, you know, look, I, I'll tell you that that's the authenticity of you and that's what makes you special. One thing I will say that makes you special when you're on stage, and I'm going to tell everybody this story because last year was my first year at CCMF. I've never been able to get there. And I knew Dank because we had met each other and we had talked beforehand. And there's so much stuff going on at CCMF, right? Crazy. I mean, you got stages, there's different performers, and it's just an amazing thing. And my wife said, where do you want to go? And, and we were checking out some stuff, and I said, I want to see where DJ Dank is. I'm about being dead serious. I appreciate it, brother. So I go up in where you're playing, and you, it, like I said, you got the hands moving, you got the stuff going. It's just a different kind of a vibe. And I didn't want to go anywhere else. Stop. I mean, you, I'm I telling you, man, it, and it's not just because I knew you, it's because it was just a special moment the way you do it. How do you create that atmosphere? Something is, my mom used to tell me I was special, not the way you were saying. She was like I was... A little bit special, <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, nothing uh, like mom to yeah, get yeah. you set straight. Yeah. Uh, but since I've been little, my mama was, and my dad, and my dad was a huge Eagles fan, Huey Lewis. My mama was a Kenny G fan, and Reba McIntyre. Yeah. I mean, we was just all over the place. So music was installed in me at a young age. And like, I can't keep my foot still if I hear some music. I mean, yeah, I can't, yeah. like, I love it. It's, it's in my soul. And then to be able to touch people through music, it just, it just, 
It lights me up. It lights a fire on me. Somebody, the fire truck just needs to follow me all day. <laughs> <laughs> just put out the fire extinguisher. <laughs> yeah, uh, on me all day. No, no. I can tell you the the life of a guy that you know. You, you got some late nights, I'm sure. You came in here drinking something a little bit earlier, and, it, and, and folks, it wasn't beer or anything like that. He was drinking. You got a little cup of uh, something. What, yeah. what was that you were doing? Um, I, these festivals, they're four days of hooting and hollering mm -hmm. and getting people pumped up. So if I don't stay on, it's, actually it's grandma's remedy. No, you can't argue with grandma. <laughs> you can't argue with grandma, right. but some green tea and some honey, a little sprinkle of cyan in there. I, can't, I didn't have any cyan this morning, but I got, do got some green tea and honey. Okay. So I'm getting, I'm going ahead, I'm getting a jump on the soreness. I already felt it coming last night. Uh, I flew in from Seattle uh, Tuesday, so we started actually Wednesday night. Yeah, yeah. So this so, is actually this is this will be my third day actually. Man, I tell you what. Well, how was the energy last night? Was it was it going crazy? You know, Thursday's the slower night. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm mean, you're talking about twenty thousand people instead of forty thousand people, <laughs> and it was crazy yesterday. I'm just I can't wait to see what these next three days got to offer. Dude, it's like running a marathon a little bit at this it, point, it, right? It really is. It really is. Man, that is cool. Hey, had, if you're ever out there and you get in front of a group and they seem like they're kind of just a little bit more, you know, low key than they need to be. What's your trick to get them fired up a little bit? I try to reach out and touch them, either through the music or on the microphone. Let them know, listen, you, I, why are you in this building with me right now? I don't care what's on your mind. I want to be able to touch you and, and help you live in the moment and forget about the bills, the relationships, the court dates, whatever you got going on in your life, you know, whatever you got going right? on, I want you to forget about life, live in the moment. If it's only 30 seconds with me, just live in the moment and feel good. And that's, that's why I think that's why God got me here. Man, I'm pretty that's, sure of it. that's I'm some pretty, pretty sure powerful stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree with that. And look, you know, so sometimes when I'm talking to people, they say, why did you call this the leader mentality show? I said, because we all show leadership in whatever we do in life. You know, you have the ability to inspire somebody. Yes, sir. You have the ability to make somebody feel good when they they might not be feeling good. That's leadership, man. So and well you're done. great at it. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah, I'll say, keep a good eye on this guy. <laughs> keep a good eye on him. I appreciate it. Well, look, man. Um, you you have been traveling around all over the country. Yes, sir. What, what, where all have you been this year? Woo! I can't even. I can't. I don't know where to start. Uh, right now, I'm on four national comedy tours and two national music tours. Okay. Uh, let me talk to you a little bit about the comedy. Uh, I'm. Just started one in Opelika, Alabama two weeks ago, mm. and uh, that's uh, the Glitter and Grit Tour. It's three powerhouse females, Ashley Goodermuth, Robin Phoenix, and Red Squirrel. Nice. I'm also uh, with Southern Mama, uh, Southern Mama Nim Comedy Tour, Darren Knight, Red Squirrel, and Gary Carver. And then um, the Party Down South Tour, I'm on it with Andrew Kahn. He's, he's blowing up pretty good okay. right now. And then, but my favorite one is by the bestmedicinebrigade.com. And this company here is throwing a tour called Operation Hilarious, where we're going around the United States around military installments and throwing these comedy t uh, contests. So we'll go to one city, the winner of that con comedy contest will go to the next city. And then, so we're going to do the final. For that, uh, November the 11th in Hollywood, California, on okay. the Jimmy Fallon show. Nice. Yeah, but this, it's a. Uh, there we're we're healing people through music and comedy, aimed towards vets and the military. Man, that is some powerful stuff. You know, my dad was a military man. He was in the army and then the army. air force. So I'm always, anytime I can get in behind Me that, too. man. Me too. Much respect for that. Uh, so that you said that that's going to on the Jimmy Fallon show. Yeah. So you will be there. Or are you gonna get a chance yeah, to meet no, Jimmy November Fallon? November eleventh, and I'm a Jimmy Fallon fan. And the way he does his music, you know, he's yeah. always in the music. So yeah, yeah, and and you know what, you're a funny guy. So I can ah. see how you got this stuff set up behind the scenes, man. Very powerful. Well, with this CCMF 2023, is there any particular performer that you're excited about seeing? And put, you know, I know you, you're touring with these guys all the time, so it's, it's, it might be a little different. But uh, me being a country boy. But a beach guy moving here uh, 12 years ago. Yeah. Um, I'm a No Shoes Nation. I'm okay. No Shoes Nation. Right. Kenny Chesney. I'm excited to see him. But I tell you who did surprise me yesterday. Jillian Rose. Mm. She, no, I mean Jessica Rose. She is a powerhouse. Keep that name 
listen for that name. She's a powerhouse. She's gonna she's gonna be big. She's All gonna right. be huge. Jessica it, it, Rose. As you take Jessica Rose, and this year maybe she's on one stage, but on the next year yeah. you're saying she yeah. might be on that bigger stage. Yes, that's what All I'm right. exactly what I'm saying. Beautiful. Powerhouse. She surprised me. Man, that is awesome. But there's stuff. so many great artists. They're all they're all amazing, and it's 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 such a beautiful thing to be with all these people on this beautiful beach i mean so yeah. blessed all glory to god it is a blessing for sure and i wanted to ask you one thing i don't know if you're willing to share this with us but uh <laughs> so i as i've talked to people about you being on the show i'll say hey i've got dj dank williams coming mm -hmm. on and and everybody you know they've been excited about mm -hmm. hearing it but i always get this question is that your real name no that ain't that's not my okay that's name. a stage okay. name okay that is my stage name. how'd you come up with this name? okay so it's a secret, y'all. Oh, yeah. Secret, well, we can't uh, turn, turn the mics yeah. off. Yeah. So, uh, I was DJ Mayhem here in the Carolinas. Nice. M-A-Y-H-A-M. I was here in the Carolinas. Uh, since I've been 15, I was DJ Mayhem. Yeah, that's kind of I, a cool name, by the yeah, way. I like cool. it. Yeah. I like it, too. But uh, I've, So I moved here to get more DJ work because I'm from a little country town where there wasn't a whole lot of DJ work. Yep. And when I moved here, somebody from Nashville seen me and um, asked me to go to Nashville. When I went to Nashville, it really... It opened up some doors for me, and uh, I was talking with a buddy of mine one night, and he was like, you know, this would be a good name, and this would be a good name, and this would be a good name. So uh, he said, Dank Williams, and uh, we ran with it. And it's, it's been a blessing. And the it's rest is in history. It, it, the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, listen, man, we uh, kind of wrapping up on our one segment here. I could talk to you all day. But listen, keep doing that thing. Keep lifting up people, and I appreciate you being on the show, my friend. Thank you, my brother. Thanks right. for having me. You got it, brother. All right, and this is Rob Clemens. We'll see you on the next segment. Welcome to the Leader Mentality Show. We are still at CCMF. We'll be here all day at the Grand Strand Brewery in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I'm here with Bryant Barnhill from NASCAR. Good buddy of mine, Frank, uh, Bryant, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. I mean, honestly, CCMF is here and, you know, it's weird to have an off weekend of racing and then and have CCMF at the same time, but it's been a blast, even for the first day. Yeah. And, uh, I'm enjoying my weekend off. Oh, I, I can I can say you're enjoying your weekend off, but it's not like you'll be relaxing much because you'll be over here doing all this stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, but when you're doing something you love, it's 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 just a cakewalk. No, that's killer, man. Well, how was it last night? Did you get to go to night one of CCMF? Yeah, I, I'm as much as I loved Hardy, I. Uh, the old school country kid in me was just loving some Tracy Lawrence. Really? I, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, somebody you didn't really like put on the schedule that you're like, this is who I came to see, and yeah. then like to hear him live, it was it was unbelievable. It was awesome. Okay, okay. Well, what what was your takeaway from the night? Like night one, I saw the pictures on social media. I don't know if they were doing it justice. It looked pretty crowded to me. What were you thinking? Honestly, for night one, I felt like it was really well. Like I mean, there was a lot of people, obviously, but I felt like the crowd was you know very into it and uh you know it's one of those things you, you're like this is night one man i'm scared Oof. to know what night two is about to look like boy dude <laughs> all right so there's a bunch of big performers coming up and you saw a couple of good ones last night what are you looking forward to over the next few days honestly there, there's so many heavy hitters when it comes to ccmf mm -hmm. now and it's uh i mean i always i love kenny chesney so, okay I mean, all right yeah yeah and uh so i'll be looking forward to him and then uh you know ian musnick and you know some of these other guys right and, and girls i'm looking forward to hearing them play man that's super cool well man you've been up to some big stuff of yourself this season so this nascar season we were talking before season we had some great shows but as it's unwinded what all's been happening man tell us some so give us some updates oh man We've been hard at it in the Cars Tour Series, uh, just racing with Dale Hart Jr. and all those guys. Had North Wilkesboro and. By the way, know. you, you got to stop right there. I was racing with Dale Hart Jr. And anyway, <laughs> let's go on. How was that, man? I mean, it, it's, it's, is, have you gotten to talk to him before? Yeah, no. It, honestly, we've you know I've raced enough on the tour now, and you know he fairly knows me. We've hung out several times, and uh, you know he's one of those guys that he, he gets it. Mm -hmm. You know when you know anytime we can have a conversation or whatever he. 
he, he's very genuine to stop and, and, and hear me out, whether it be pertaining to the Cars Tour series or just racing in general. Yeah, uh, yeah. He, he's, he's a very open and genuine person, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad to have him as one of the owners of the series. I was gonna say, does does Dale Earnhardt Jr. ever come to you and just be like, hey man, you should like really tighten up this? Uh, or, like, do you get tips? No, or? no. I mean. He, Every now and then he'll say something to me, oh, and, yeah. but it, like I don't know if he's like messing with me or he's just you know uh, okay. trying, to, trying to be nice. Is he trying to get in your head? Is Dale Earnhardt getting it? <laughs> he might be. He might be. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. Well, but, cool, man. Well, what else has been going on? Yes, you know, have you been um, winning some races? How's that going? Uh, no, uh, right now, I mean, in the car store series, you're dealing with the best of the best yeah. in the business. I mean, you're guys that are you know top tier teams, and it's the best of the best every single week. Like. There hasn't been a race this year where the difference between first and like 28th hasn't been, you know, three tenths of a second. Holy cow! Yeah, man. I mean, it, it's it's a crazy tight field, but uh, you know, these are the first time I'm going to these tracks. This yeah. is the first time I'm experiencing them, and uh, we're we're you know we know where we stand, we know where we should finish, and you know some obstacles that we have to face. But uh, it's the fun part about it, getting to learn these tracks and get to experience them, and. Uh, build a notebook for next year when you compare this series that you're doing now to let's say the the camping world series what what is the biggest difference the biggest difference is uh you know honestly the competition mm -hmm. you know when i when i got into the truck series it was you know you know forty thousand dollars could put me top 15. Mm -hmm. you know in the series i do now forty thousand dollars you know, top 20 isn't guaranteed. Really? And, wow, okay. You know, it depends on a lot of the driver and your equipment, but also, you know, talent-wise, you know, because you can have the best of the best, but if you can't bring your little bit to the table, then it's not going to be worth anything. Yeah, it, it makes every second all that more important, right? Oh, yeah. And, and this goes back into even part of the mentality of this show. You, you can't take a day off when you want to be the best at what you're doing. No. Have, how many days a week are you on the road right now doing this stuff? Uh, right now, uh, it's been crazy the last three or four weeks of just been on the road, you know, quick seven day turnarounds. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's it's been a lot, uh, but you know, every now and then we get like a week off and it's it, like this is more of like a, a 12 to 13 day turnaround, which is, is a little bit relaxing for yeah. a smaller team like us and the other guys on the tour. Uh, and then it's just like you go from that and then we're boom we're right back to another si seven six day turnaround Man. I mean we're usually leaving out of town on like a Wednesday and coming back on a Sunday. So yeah, so you're, you're spending quite a bit of time oh, out yeah. there. You get any downtime, man? What have you been doing for relaxation lately? <laughs> working, working. Yeah, now, now tell us about that, because you've been, you've been doing, I mean, aren't you working with like some sort of a farm or yeah, something like that? Yeah, no, I, I work on the ranch as well. Uh, my biggest sponsor, uh, they, uh, you know, they've been absolutely amazing yeah. in building that uh, Stella Setter Sanctuary Ranch ever on 701 South. Uh, near Poly Swamp, but uh, loving that, man. Okay. I, I, getting to, you know, just kind of do, you know, I say kind of like more simplistic work of very satisfying work for me. I, you know what, I appreciate that though. It's stuff that probably can be more relaxing to the soul. Yeah. Than, so you have two modes. You got like relaxing, even kill, <laughs> chill, Brian Barnhill, and then you got like, I got to win. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> it's, uh, and I, I was talking to the, um, uh, one of my crew guys about it yeah. this last race. I go, a lot of these guys, you know, you have drivers that, you know, and even just high end athletes, they have this selfish nature about them and but you have to be able to control it and turn it off yeah that's a uh, well that's powerful and man. uh you know it's a complete different mode from what you're usually kind of used to and it's like i tell people all the time when that helmet comes on my own mother will look at me and be like i don't know this guy. i don't know this guy, know this guy. <laughs> does she disown you during I, that i moment? mean looking at me she's like i'm not talking to you <laughs> <laughs> I say a prayer, but okay. Well, so so now we got to get into it. How did you get this this gene for racing? Is it your mom or your dad, or do, do you know where you got this from? I think it's even keel as far as mom and dad. Yeah, yeah. I feel like mom's got that more like you know kind of relaxing side of things, and then dad's like, we're doing it. We're let's go. Let's uh, I go. Got, we got this going, and uh, so it's kind of got even a little bit of both. You got a little bit of both. Yeah, it makes a good balance. My experience <laughs> with my mom was we lived in England. I don't know if you've ever been to England, but they have these interstates over there, and there's no speed limit. 
And uh, I remember my mom and I, she taking me to school and we're, and my mom's always notoriously late. So we'd be driving to school like 95 miles an hour, I swear to God. <laughs> and not in a cool car either, like a little, you know, like a little Honda or something. And, uh, but the thing about England is you can be going 95 and people are still passing you. That's how it is. So you need to try it sometime. Yeah, man. no, I think, okay. I, I think I might try that. Yeah, yeah just a hopping a skip over to England. Yeah, I'll just figure a, that out real quick. A little quick. eight hour flight, you'll be good. <laughs> Hey, listen, man, so you've been doing the asphalt cowboy thing, and I really think that's a cool thing. You've been handing out those shirts. How'd you come up with this concept? What's it mean? Well, honestly, it's one of those things that I thought about over the years. I mean, just kind of been around kind of the rodeo life and everything like that, and uh, just having those connections. But also, you know, we're wrestling 3,100 pounds of, you know, steel and horsepower inches away from, you know, what could be disaster. So. You know, I was like, we are kind of, you know, some asphalt cowboys. Yeah. And so it was something I always kind of had in motion. And then uh, things just kind of came into fruition at the perfect timing with the ranch. And uh, yeah, we just been, you know, it kicked off ever since. And now when they see us at the racetrack, they call us the asphalt cowboys. Nice, man. <laughs> well, that's it. Definitely. Next time you're on the show, you have to bring some of those oh, yeah. super cool merchandise. Um, so what's next for you over the over the rest of the season? What do you got coming up? Yeah, so uh, next week we'll be at Dominion Raceway up in Spotsville, Virginia, mm -hmm. uh, racing with those guys. And uh, now it's going to be a lot of fun. Brand new facility. We got Jumbotron, bar, nice. restaurant in the... Yeah, so it, it's it's a really nice place, and so we'll be doing that, and then uh, honestly just hammering out the rest of the Cars Tour schedule and uh, having a time in our lives. Yeah, well, that's a, it's always good to do something you really enjoy. Um, your sponsors, you doing well with that? Or are you still taking on sponsors for the rest of the season? I mean, we're always taking on new partners and helping, you know, any way we can help them grow and, and uh, connect them up with uh, whoever they need to be connected with. But the uh, biggest thing is helping other people grow their business. and. Uh, you know, we're always up for the task of working with new partners. Uh, yeah. The ranch, it's it's growing, it's doing its own thing, but anybody that wants to kind of come on board and, and know how we can grow their brand or their business, it's the best way to do it. You know, and, and I'll tell you, that that is something I recommend anybody that's actually listening to the show and, and thinking about a creative way to market your business. You can do a NASCAR sponsorship with Bryant for a lot less than you can do a billboard <laughs> on highway you know, it's 501 oh, yeah. or something. So I think yeah. that's a powerful thing for people to know. And you are actually working to try to make it right. Oh, yeah. I, I've talked to a lot of people who, if they can just sell one deal, they're happy. And, and you know, did you make any uh, yeah. gains off it or not? But when Brian gets with you, he's actually trying to make you be more successful. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I always tell people if that billboard can make a lot of noises and, uh, you know, scream your brand and, you know, make posts on social media and everything, that's a heck of a billboard. But until that day that gets created, I, you know, I'm your guy. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Well, Brian, um, I, how can people find you? Uh, all over social media, Brian Barnhill Racing, uh, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, hit me up. Love to talk with you, get you some merch, and uh, can't wait till next time, man. Well, hey, listen, I got one of these things for you here. So he's got a, one of his official leader mentality oh, yeah. shows, so I got one of those. Don't forget to grab that, and enjoy the rest of CCMF, man. I appreciate you being on. I will, man. Appreciate uh, it. Thank all you. All right, brother. And this is Rob Clemens. Stay tuned for our next segment coming up.